We did guide Q3, um, and it's guided right. exactly how we thought it would be for the back half of the year, which is similar to what we saw in Q2. Q2 is a very strong quarter for us um, on all metrics across the board, beat on revenue, beat on EPS, um, and we're really delivering on the tech-led reimagination that we rolled out last July. Importantly, in the quarter, we also closed on our Adaventa deal, um, and we announced the sale of our Korea business, $3 billion for 80% of our Korea business to eMark. So if you look at the portfolio simplification, David, really from the StubHub transaction through the announcement of Korea, we've created $20 billion in value for shareholders, which is, which is really great. The other thing that it's allowed is allow us to focus on the core because the core strategy is working. We're coming out of the pandemic stronger than we did coming into it and feel really great about where the business is. The innovation yeah. playbook yeah. that we've rolled out is working. All right, well, let's talk a bit about that because I can remember our first conversation when you used that term tech-led reimagination. It's been about a year or more since you'd said that. So what can we look at in terms of evidence for that? I know that your focus has been, for example, on high value buyers, buyers that are buying over $800 or more than six times a year, uh, or even buyers who sell. So tell me, Jamie, how is the tech-led reimagination being reflected a year later in the current numbers? Yeah, that strategy is working. If you look at those high value buyers, I, I like to go out and talk to them. They wake up, they get a cup of coffee and they get on eBay. And you know what we see is that what's great is they come into us shopping in one category and then they start shopping across the whole experience. Those 20% of high value buyers are 75% of our GMV. And what's great is the strategy of focusing on category by category is really working. So we've talked in the past about sneakers and watches. This quarter, we rolled out authentication for handbags over $500. And if you look at, like, for example, a luxury watch buyer, they come in and buy a, a, a high-end watch on eBay. They start buying other watches, but then they buy 50 other items totaling $9,000. So this focus strategy of really going after high-value buyers, getting people to shop across categories, is really healthy for the ecosystem, really great for our sellers on eBay. Does it require your shareholder base to focus on different metrics than they have in the past, perhaps? Not as much on overall growth in GMV as opposed to perhaps just margin itself? Well, look, if you look at these focus categories, so watches and sneakers, despite their lapping extraordinary comps from last year, they're still growing double digits ahead of the overall marketplace. Our customer satisfaction in the categories that we're focused on is over 90. And this playbook is only, we've only rolled it out to 10% of the site will be at 20% by the end of the year, but we think it's applicable to every category in the site. Take motors, parts, and accessories. This is a great category for eBay. This quarter, we rolled out a motorcycle parts finder in some of our countries. That's performing really well. And we're, we're launching new features in collectibles. You and I talked last time about collectibles. Our trading cards yeah. business has already done $2 billion this year. And we just launched some new features this quarter, price guide, David, nobody has the, the level of data and information on pricing that eBay has. We have 25 years of data. So putting back, that back in the hands of buyers and sellers has been a game changer. We also launched a My Collections feature where enthusiasts can bring their collections on. So we're leaning yeah. in into the areas and the underlying health of the business is stronger.